Day 501. Today there is a lot of news all over the front. First of all, today Ukrainians reportedly conducted a missile strike on the Crimean bridge. Russian sources reported that Ukrainian Air Force made an attempt to once again destroy the bridge and cut off the southern Russian group located in Zaporizhia from supplies. Russian air defense operators claimed that they shot down the missile just several kilometers north of Tamany and that the remnants of the intercepted missile fell into the Azov Sea. Nonetheless, Russian authorities closed the bridge and caused massive traffic jams. Local authorities' representatives claimed that Ukrainians used a cruise missile. Russian analysts stated that any use of cruise missiles would necessitate Ukrainian jets to fly way too close to the front line, exposing themselves to the Russian air defense. Later, there are two more strikes one on the Russian military objects in the Rostov region and one in the Bransk region. Here, Russian air defense was unsuccessful in shooting down the missile, which is why local surveillance cameras captured the arrival of the rocket. The footage was quickly analyzed, and almost all analysts agreed that Ukrainians used modified S-200 rockets that follow a ballistic trajectory, which is why such rockets have a range of up to 400 kilometers. Interestingly, simultaneously with the strike on the Crimean bridge, the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense officially confirmed that they were responsible for the destruction of the Crimean bridge last year. The combination of such news made some analysts raise the alarm that Ukrainians are determined to destroy the bridge in the near future and call for the reinforcement of the area with even more air defense systems. The Russian Ministry of Defense should also come out with an official announcement. Today, some media sources reported that Putin removed the chief of the general staff Gerasimov from the position of the commander of the so-called special military operation. Gerasimov should still formally remain the chief of the general staff to avoid the loss of face, but the new commander should be Colonel General Teplinsky, who was the commander of airborne forces. The changes have not yet been confirmed by Russian officials, however such changes would not be unlikely in the aftermath of the completely failed winter offensive campaign, even while Wagner forces achieved notable results. The Russian high command had an unclear structure from the very beginning, and such rotations of commanders and complications of the chain of command make it less and less efficient, because everyone has an incentive to blame someone else for the failures on the front line. In the meantime, Ukrainians finally returned the commanders of the Azov regiment back to Ukraine. These commanders were responsible for holding Mariupol for more than two months at the beginning of the invasion, which required Russians to devote tens of thousands of soldiers, giving Ukrainians time to form a defense line. Azov regiment was considered to be the most elite Ukrainian detachment, with extremely high standards for physical readiness, as well as years of combat experience. The commander stated that they would join the army again and continue to fight. And with the ongoing counteroffensive operation, it is no doubt that these commanders would cause a lot of damage to Russian forces. When it comes to Ukrainian Air Force, it is about to receive 10 helicopters Mi-24. The helicopters were already seen en route in Poland and should get to the front very soon. Right now, Ukrainians are amply using these helicopters in the Kherson region to protect the Ukrainian bridgehead on the other side of the river and facilitate offensive operations toward Oleshki. Due to the local geography, the Russian Air Force struggles to detect and shoot down Ukrainian helicopters that operate on the higher, western bank of the Dnipro River. This is one of the reasons why Russian forces struggle to develop their counterattacks and establish new positions on the islands. Finally, in order to help Ukrainians to proceed faster with their counteroffensive, the United States announced new weapon deliveries, which this time included cluster munitions. A cluster munition is a specialist shell that scatters explosives covering a large area. When used in residential areas, such weapons cause high collateral damage, which is why they are banned by more than 100 countries. Nonetheless, both Ukrainians and Russians have been using cluster munitions from the beginning of the war. And such weapons prove to be very effective when conducting artillery preparation on the trenches in the field. Right now Ukrainians are facing countless Russian positions and fortifications in the fields, which means that deliveries of such weapons will greatly help Ukrainians to conduct their storming operations faster and with fewer casualties. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. 
Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.